Right, welcome to the first video back after a long break. Now there's a lot in the Linux world that's happened in my absence that I'm very excited to check out. One of them actually being KDE. So at home, I've mainly just been using GNOME on my home machines and haven't really kept any tabs whatsoever on KDE. And they are now on a brand new mega release of version 6. So I'm super excited just to jump straight into it and see how this desktop's matured. Now we'll have a little quick run through of the release announcement here, but we won't spend too much time because a lot of this is going to be new for me anyway. So we'll just run through and see how we get on. So one of the big changes is that it's now going to be using Wayland by default outside of the box, but they will of course continue support for X11 for those of us that still like to use it. We have a new overview of X, so we've combined the overview and desktop grid effects into one and massively improved its touchpad gestures. And I have installed this onto a laptop today because I really do want to check out those touchpad gestures and just see how fluid they are. From the animation there, it's all looking pretty tasty. So they've now introduced support for high dynamic range on some supported monitors and of course it comes with a pretty good looking brand new wallpaper. So one of the things I quite liked from what I've seen so far is this new floating panel. I've always quite liked a floating panel. I know some people aren't not too big fans of it but of course this can all be changed in the settings so we'll check that out as well. And then we have some changes to the defaults and a nice new refreshed breeze theme to make your desktop look a bit more modern. They've reorganized some of the settings, which is always welcome because KDE settings sort of has always been a bit of a mess when you jump into the system settings. And for your old timers out there, they've brought back the desktop queue when transitioning through different virtual workspaces. We've also had some changes to the plasma search, so you can now customize the order of your search results. And then we've also got a lot more announcements here. So we've got some new updates to the Plasma Mobile. And then we also have updates to the applications such as KDE Gear now bringing us up to version 24.02 and applications to QT6. And then there's also been some new updates to Caden Live, which is quite cool for me because that's what I'm going to be using to edit my videos on. It's going to be quite rusty though, so it's going to be fun editing this one and see how much I've forgotten and need to relearn. But I think we'll leave the release announcement for now and we'll just jump straight into it and see how we go. Right, and here we are. Now, I must just start with saying that out of the box, it really does just look very nice and modern, doesn't it? So for a little while, I do think KD kind of fell behind the whole look and feels department and was getting slightly beaten by Gnome with the advent of Gnome 40. But this is kind of the nicest out of the box experience I've seen so far. But again, we'll see how it all sort of interacts with each other. Now, before we jump into it, we're just going to go on to the about section. So the distribution we are using to showcase some of these new features and just have a general refresher of KDE is, of course, KDE Neon 6.0. Now, it wasn't in the Arch repos before I checked, which is why we quickly installed this on a, an external SSD. Now, if you want to go ahead and do this yourself, there are a couple of strange little bugs that I've noticed, but they have been reported, which are things like your shutdown and just general power buttons not working. Right, first up, let's check out this new floating panel by default. So as you can see here, there's a nice bit of spacing on sort of outsides of the panel horizontally and vertically. And it's just a little touch, but I do think that sort of gives it a nice refresh and a whole sort of modern look to the desktop. Now, let's just see how it interacts with applications when they are maximized. So if we open up our file manager, which has of course had some nice new features and changes to the settings in today's release as well, but we're not going to focus on that for the moment. So if we just double tap on the sort of title bar there, we can see that it's done a very quick and fluid animation to then stretching out our panel into a more old style traditional panel and utilizing the screen space there. It would look a bit weird if you just had the floating panel with the window sitting on top of it, and I'm glad that they do have that default behavior out of the box. Now, if we just do that one more time, you can see that it's kind of transparent here, but if we do full screen it once more, it kind of takes away all of those effects and just makes it almost like a solid color there. Now, if we use this window and just drag it a bit closer ever so slowly, we should be able to see the animation a bit easier. So if we just pull this window down, as you can see there, very smooth and fluid animation. And there's just little touches like that that just bring a nice new modern touch to your desktop. Now, if you don't like the whole floating panel thing out of the box, let's see how easy it is to switch over to a non-floating panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and see what the options we have here are. So we have the standard options that we're all used to, like configure icons only, show alternatives and all of that good stuff. But I think what we're going to want to do here is click the enter edit mode. And here we go. So we can actually change the whole sort of position and style of it all the way down to the visibility and opacity. So at the moment, we've got it as always visible. But here we see we've got a nice little checkbox here for floating. So if we remove that, and then let's get out of that now. Let's just press exit once more. And there you go. Let's close this bad boy as well. And there you go. You've gone back to the old standard sort of KDE paneling there. Still retains a bit of transparency. So I imagine it's going to have the same sort of effect if we was to 
full screen it is still going to sort of retain the adaptive panel transparency when you've got an application window maximized which is best because it's less distracting and i've always sort of set set my desktops up to mirror that kind of effect now let's go back into the enter edit mode because i do i really like the floating panel mode so we're going to leave it as that as we work away through the, uh, the desktop and see how we get on right so another thing i'm really excited to check out is of course the new overview of the whole touchpad gestures and all of that good stuff which is one of the main reasons i actually did switch over my laptops to name 40 when it first started coming out because i really do just like nice fluid touchpad gestures so let's check this out and see if they're as fluid if not better on kde so first of all we're just going to use our touchpad just to slowly try and see how the transition works so as you can see here we currently have no virtual desktops added but we'll do that in just a moment i just want to sort of feel how smooth it is following the actual movement of my fingers there not bad actually it feels a little bit less fluid than gnome i think but that might just be my touchpad on this laptop it ain't really too great these days right let's open up a load of applications and see how it handles all of that with applications open so we're going to open up a few little applications here we'll open up discover we'll open up the settings we'll open up caden live which i've installed ready to edit today's video right so now we have a few applications open, let's now test how that's going to do it. Actually, no, that's very nice now. So then if we just drag it up one bit more, we can have the option to add some virtual desktops, which we'll go ahead and do now. So now we've got two, and of course we can drag things and drop them and all of that good stuff. So let's jump onto here now, and let's see what the actual... Hmm, there we go. Right, so that is quite a nice fluid sort of transition between the desktop serve, just a simple slide. Right, while we're looking at sort of desktop look and feel stuff, I did want to quickly just show you the desktop cube thing. I know you're all probably pretty used to what that looks like. It's been around for quite a while. It's just sort of been reintroduced and revamped in this version. However, I think there's another bug here on the KDE Neon 6 ISO that I've downloaded because a lot of the just shortcuts aren't working. So if we go into our desktop effects here, and if we just, I'll tell you what, let's just search for desktop cube. You can see, hold on, let's just type in cube there we go so you can see here we've got desktops arranged for the cube here but however if we just click on it and go into the settings here so there is actually none applied so i do believe the default is meta c so let's apply that and see if we can actually get that to toggle the cube no i'm not sure if i'm just not looking in the right place but i think we'll just skip that for today's video but again I have encountered a few bugs here on this new ISO, so I wouldn't worry too much. This will all be ironed out as it gets an update. All pretty simple fixes anyway. Now, there have also been some changes to the Alt Tab Switcher. I do believe I've seen some of the release announcements. So let's open up a few application windows. I believe it now uses a grid sort of layout by default for multiple applications. Let's open up a load of them. Let's open up pretty much most of the applications we have installed on this machine. So let's open up console. And let's open up Caden Live and VLC. Another thing cool about sort of new newer versions of Caden Live that I've read as well, which is why I've also installed Audacity. So now when you extract audio from a video, it sort of easily lets you edit it in sort of third party applications and just bump it straight back in, which is quite nice to help with your workflow when you're editing videos. Right. So we've got a few applications open. So let's test out the alt tabbing. Okay, so we do have quite a nice little grid there, very smooth switching, sort of a little slight fade animation there. Let's just open up a few more and see how it handles a lot more applications open. So let's open up Ocular, let's open up some utilities. Let's go ahead and get Kate, the text editor. So it still gives you two text editors by default on the uh, KDE Neon 6 here. So let's also open up KWrite. Okay, there we go. So actually, I do quite like that. Very nice and easy to see the actual application windows and just quickly jump to the application you wish to jump to. Very nice. Right, so we're now going to have a quick look at the new sort of order search results of KRunner. Now, as I've mentioned, if you're going to go ahead and try out some of the new features of KDE 6 using KDE Neon's latest ISO that's currently available on the website, again, some of the weird, funny little bugs will mean you have to do some workarounds to get things to work just to check them out. Again, very small, minor issues that are easy to fix and I'm sure will be updated very shortly. But again, one of them was the keyboard shortcut for KRunner just not activating the service whatsoever. So what I ended up having to do is first opening it up from kickoff and then the keyboard shortcuts worked pretty much every single time. Now, so if we go into the settings here, now of course by default they like to position it at the top. I think it looks a bit more modern at the center, but that's not what we're going to worry about right now. So we're going to go into configure enable search results and you'll see 
that I have added some favorite plugins here and we now have these little movable sort of list entries there and that will sort of change the order that results come in. So what we're going to do, we have made some locations and bookmarks and all of that good stuff. So we're going to go ahead. So let's see what our actual order is. So first we've got locations, bookmarks. I'll tell you what, let's put windows right at the top there because I also have a window open with a term that I'm going to search for in K Runner. So we're going to close that off for the moment. Now applications is on there and it's going to be last. So hopefully now when we type in Caden Live into our K Runner little widget, the first thing that should pop up should be the window because I currently have a Firefox window open with Caden Live's website. So we're going to go ahead and test that now. So let's close all of that off and we'll also just press OK on that. And now because I've already opened up K Runner, the keyboard shortcut should be all good and raring to go. And there we go. So now we're just going to very easily type in Caden Live and just give it a second. There we go. And they've also made some improvements to the speed and just use of K Runner and it is very fast. Now I have noticed it's not finding everything that I've added in the ordered list, but I wouldn't worry about that for too much at the moment. But as you can see there, it's ordered it there for us. Now if we jump back into the settings, we'll make sure that's just not a fluke and make sure that it is indeed following the pattern that we've created ourselves with our favorite plugins. So again, Windows is at the top. We're going to drag application to the top now and we're going to apply that i'm just going to do the same search to make sure that what should happen does happen so let's close that off and again we're going to open up with the keyboard shortcut and we're going to type in caden live give it a second and now as you can see the first result is caden live from the applications now i did create some documents and files called caden live it doesn't seem to have picked them up at the moment i'm not too worried about that for the time being so let's move on now i think what we're going to do is just quickly check out some of the new changes made to Dolphin and then we'll start beginning to wrap it up there. So there's been some simple and welcome changes made to Dolphin like disk space readings and all of that good stuff but one very simple one is if you go into the context menus here now we've got a bit of reordering here but we can also see that we have the option now to open in split view a very simple thing but something that can be quite handy when you're wanting to move files across different folders without having to quickly open up other windows and do the whole drag and cross drag and drop across separate application windows like so again very small but welcome little additions made that overall will just make it feel like a more cohesive a desktop environment now it wouldn't be a true Tidus tech linux video without quickly checking out the ram usage before we wrap up dog's just woken up okay so on a quite a bare bones kde neon install we are operating at around about 880 MB from a fresh install and a fresh boot, which isn't too bad going, especially now as the desktop matures and introduces more modern features. Now, there are, of course, going to be a load of stuff that is mentioned in the release announcement that we didn't really check out today or was hard to really show on a video, like things you need to feel to see, like the sort of performance improvements and all of that good stuff. So I will leave a link to the release announcement in the description below for those of you that want to go and check this out and want to have a little bit of a read before you go ahead and dive straight in. Now, to wrap things up, Really happy with this new release of KDE. As I mentioned in the sort of intro of this video, I haven't really been keeping tabs on KDE for years, actually. It's been a couple of years since I've really sat down and played around with KDE as a desktop environment. But I think I might switch back to KDE now. I've always been a sort of KDE guy, but I, like I say, with the advent of GNOME 40 and stuff, I kind of just feel like it took over ever so slightly. But with this new release and just the changes made since I've been using KDE, I really like it. So again, thank you for watching. I know it was a bit of a rusty one there as we relearn how to do all these kind of videos. But if there's anything you'd like me to check out in future videos, leave it in a comment below on the community tab. I think there's a couple of distributions that I do have my eye on checking out. Let's quickly just see what they are. So one of them is Arcane Linux and of course some of the new sort of additions to the immutable distributions for Fedora's atomic desktops. So let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me check out on the channel next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.